Okay, welcome back to the channel. So uh, in my last episode, we made these just equal length, four inch long, three eighths uh, aluminum rods. And in this episode, we're gonna complete all the mill work on them. So what we wanna do is, if you're looking over here, uh, I'm gonna do these spot faces uh, through holes here, tapped holes there, the slot. We're gonna slot this. And one of the trickier parts is I need a hole here at 30 degrees on the end to the rest of these holes. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. And this is what it looks like, just a 3D printed version. You can see what we're gonna be shooting for. So we're over here at my milling machine, Bridgeport mill, one and a half horsepower, um, using a 5C collet dividing head. Um, so we're using the same collets we used on the lathe. And uh, the way these work, uh, let's bring you over here. On the back end, <clears throat> if you can see it, there's 24 set screws in the back of this thing. And that gives you the ability to index every 15 degrees. And all you do is uh, screw the ones down you want it to stop at. So, you know, we'll be using that later in this project too. But for right now, we're actually just using it as a work holding fixture. Um, obviously going to use some end mills and also a slitting saw for the project. So the first step is we're using the same collet we did on the lathe. And I've got that same stop at the bottom of the collet. And what I've done is set it so when I put the rod in here, <clears throat> it stops. And since I'm, we're going to be cutting a slot one inch deep, I got a little over one inch so we don't hit the collet. So you slide it in till it stops. And then there's a screw on the back you turn to tighten the collet and a lever that locks it in. And that's it. We're holding it. Now if we're doing some indexing, you turn this rod here and you pull it to the next stop. And it'll index. I have it set for every 30 degrees, which we will be using later on in some of the parts that I need to make. Um, so that's how that works. Real easy to use and perfect for this project. So now we have the 3 8 bar loaded in the indexing head. Um, you know, I did actually have to, you know, get everything trammed in with an indicator, make sure that everything's uh, in line uh, so it's going to work. Um, but the first thing we need to do is find the edge of this piece and set the zero point. So what I'm using is an edge finder. If you're not familiar with these, if I grab the bottom here, it moves. And we want to throw it off intentionally, off center. And what we're going to do is bring it in towards a part. You're going to see it really wiggling. And then at some point, it's going to stop. And then it's just going to knock out off center. And I'll show you that. So let's go ahead and do it. So you can see it, it's really wiggling and I'm <clears throat> feeding the table and you know, let's see, there it goes, it's stopping and if you could see it, there it just knocked out of center. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it and go over to the readout and set the x-axis, zero it and the edge finder, the diameter there is a hundred thousandths or two hundred so we're going to move it a hundred thousandths off center on the indicator. So all right, approximately. So now if we go back here to our piece and I bring it down, it should be right on the middle of that edge finder. And then what I'll go ahead and do then, I'm going to just set the X at zero and we're good on that axis. The next thing we need to do is bring the center of the pin, find the location of it uh, this way. And what I do for that is I use the center finder tool. I'll show you how this works. So I've got it loaded in the spindle and I'll bring it down against the bar stock. Okay. You can see it's way off center right now. Um, the arrow's not there. So what I'll do is just slowly bring in the y-axis. I'm just turning and until I get it the line to line up in the middle. And I can double check this with an indicator and I usually do but you know what every time it's almost been perfect and for this application uh, it'll work. So that 
will find us the center of the bar on the y-axis and we'll go ahead on the y-axis on the readout and zero it there. So now we got the center point on x and y. So now we're going to go ahead and we'll do the 5 sixteenths uh, 50 thousandths deep spot faces. I've got a 5 sixteenths end mill uh, loaded in the machine, in the spindle. And what I'm going to do first is on the bridge port, I've got a quick stop. As the handle goes up and down, I can set a stop. And I'm going to stop it above the part here. So I take this piece and I'm just going to slide it up. And now the handle stops way before the part. And what I'm going to do now is use the knee part of the mill and I'm going to raise it until it touches the cutter. So let me go ahead and do that. Now I'll keep raising the knee until, you know, I use a piece of paper here until I feel that cutter touch. And once it does, I know I'm close enough, you know, to the surface of that 3 8 pin. So now I've got the cutter touching the 3 8 bar um, and I've got the the knee or the Z axis set to zero here. So the next thing I'm going to do is loosen this quill spindle and push it out of the way. And then I'm going to go ahead and raise the table 50 thousandths. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay. So we're at 50 thousandths. So now, when I move the spindle down, it's going to go 50 thousandths below the surface and stop every time. I did the first hole just in case something went wrong. Uh, you guys wouldn't see it, but it went good. So I'll show you guys the second hole here. So I have it moved over to the 750 position here on the readout, you can see. And let's go ahead and counter or spot face this one. So we got two spot faces, 50 thousandths deep. For this next part, I went ahead and installed my drill chuck uh, in the bridge port. And I've got a center drill, tap drill, and a tap. And what we're going to do next is work on these um, 632 tapped holes. What I want to do is drill through with the tap drill and then tap all the way through for now and then come back with uh, an end mill here and we'll open these up last. So let's go ahead and do that. So I had to use a longer center drill actually because I had clearance issues with the chuck coming really close here so I don't want to risk it. So let's go ahead and just center drill this. Now I got my tap drill loaded in the chuck and I did increase the speed a little bit of uh, the mill because it's a fairly small drill that we're working with and I'm going to put a use a little bit of uh, tapping fluid um, so let's go ahead and do it So now we have two holes with uh, tap drills in them and ready to tap. So let's go ahead and tap those holes. What I like to use for tapping is this gadget. I don't know what they're actually they're called. Um, <clears throat> and what they have is this piece that goes on the end. And that piece goes up into the drill chuck. And then you just fit this in and it guides the tap uh, as you're tapping. Works really well. And I'll show you how that works. So I've got that little guide mounted in the drill chuck and go ahead and insert this into it. Like I said, it just floats in there. And then you just bring the spindle down until it touches and you just tap. And as you're tapping down, it'll float and you can move uh, the spindle up and down as needed. All right, so let me go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to go, I already did the other hole, just tap this one 
I don't know if you guys can see her from my hands in the way, but I usually work it back and forth. This isn't a blind hole, so I could probably just keep going, but that's all it takes. And this guides it really nice. Like I said, if you have too much of a gap here, you can bring it down if you have to. Now I went ahead and removed the drill chuck and I put a um, 5.30 seconds end mill in there. Now you don't really, you can use a drill chuck. I know a lot of you guys out there uh, don't like using end mills and chucks, but probably when you guys aren't watching, I'll do it uh, with the drill chuck. So what we're shooting for now is we want to open up these holes, these clearance holes. And we're going to go, it's 156 from the top. We already went down 50,000, so that's about 106. So I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch deep, make sure that we break into the slot. I'm going to use the same technique that we did on the spot faces is where I set this stop here, you know, that it'll only go so far and I lock it down and then I bring the table up to the depth or to the cutter first. So it's even with the face and then I'll move this away like I did before and move the table up the distance that we want. That way we're guaranteed we're going to stop at the same position. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I already did the first one. Again, if things went horribly wrong, you guys wouldn't have to see it, uh, but it went good, so let's bring you guys in for the second one. So everything's set, just turn it on. The next step in the process is we're going to cut this 1 16th, one inch deep slot uh, in the bar or in the rod. So what we're going to use to do that is I've got a uh, four inch diameter cutter, 1 16th thick. Um, <clears throat> so based on, you know, I don't have a lot of experience with these, so I did some reading. They said for the speed, four times the cutting speed divided by the diameter. So since it's four inches divided by four, it's just the cutting speed. And those range in different books and different opinions from anywhere from a hundred surface feet uh, per minute to up to a thousand. Uh, most of them hover around the two to 400, but I'm also limited by the speed of the mill. Um, so I think my best choice, I went in low gear and I'm going 325 RPM. So I've got everything set. Um, all we got to do is align the cutter, get it on center. Since it's four inch in diameter, I'm going to be two inches away uh, to start. And then we'll just go to three inches on the depth. To get the center height, I'm just going to put the cutter against the face and then offset it a 32nd to the middle and then offset it the distance to the center of the slot. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got everything centered, or at least I think I do. It looks like it's on the middle, so uh, should work. We'll find out. Um, <clears throat> now, by the book, it says that you can, for the depth of cut, go four times the thickness of the cutter, which four times a sixteenth here would be a quarter inch. But I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to go fifty thousandths at a time, take it slow, and use plenty of cutting fluid. So let me go. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm at the last cut. Everything went really well. So we're going to head and uh, let you guys see this last cut. If something goes wrong, I'm going to blame it on you guys because everything went well before. So here we go. Looks like we got it. All 12 pieces are done. Uh, everything went well. No issues, no mistakes. Uh, it does happen. Um, so while you guys were taking a break there, uh, getting some snacks or whatever, um, I made these pieces, just fixtures for the next step. They're just blocks with a hole tapped hole in it. And the way this is going to work is one end of this rod goes into this one. And on the other end, I'm going to insert this slotted piece into the slot and level it on the surface plate here. So once it's in here, 
I'm going to tighten it down really good and take it out. So now what I have is this face is even with the slot. And we'll go over to the machine. I'll show you how that works. So now we're back at the machine. We got the piece that we lined up. And I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the collet here. And just loose so it could rotate. And what I've done ahead of time is I figured out the center height and I got a gauge block stack ready here. And I'm going to put it underneath. And what we're going to do is just line it up to the gauge blocks. And then lock it down. Okay, remove the gauge blocks. So now our piece is in there and it's level. And like we talked about early in the video, the indexing head is set up for every 30 degrees. So now from level, we'll go ahead and index 30 degrees. And just to make sure it's working, I got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we'll go underneath. And yes, it's at 30 degrees. So now what we'll do is we can remove this little block. And we can go ahead and drill the hole. Obviously, we got to find the end here and go from the end 5 sixteenths over. But we can drill straight down. And that hole will be 30 degrees from the slot. All right, let me do that and we'll come back. So actually, I'm going to run a center drill first because this is on a curved surface. Um, I do have it set to 313 from the very end. So we'll just go ahead and uh, center drill it first. I have the drill mounted in it now and I did increase the speed of the spindle because it is a very small drill so it's going to be louder uh, and I did put some oil on here uh, to help the drilling so let's go ahead and drill it. that's it for the part so we've got one finished piece all right so all 12 pieces are finally done uh, it was a lot of work actually uh, here's what one looks like finished still have to deburr them uh, but I'll do that later there's the hole in the back so what I did is I, I did measure the slot just curiosity it's a 16th cutter and it actually cut about 67 68 thousandths wide which is perfect for what I need this for so if you're interested in finding out what these are going to be included in, what project or what, you know, thing I'm building here, you know, I did call it a turbine, uh, turbine, whatever. But um, stay tuned to the channel and um, uh, you'll find out. I uh, should have some upcoming videos detailing the project. So hope to see you soon.